Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel Python Coding. So where we dive deep into the world of Python programming. So in today's video, we'll see seven things that we should have learned much earlier for Python functions. So let's start with our program. So we'll see first of all the default arguments. Now, first of all, let's see that what is default arguments. So the default arguments allows us to set default values for function parameters. Okay. Now why to use it? To make our function more flexible and easier to use. Now let's see an example of uh, the default arguments. So first of all, we'll create a simple function for greeting. Okay. Then we'll take a parameter and we are going to give a default parameter here. Then we will print hello and now let's use the s string for printing hello and then in the hello we are going to print our name now let's call our function so when we will not give any value okay so by default it is not going to give an error if you'll not mention means if you'll not take the default argument so it will give you an error if you'll not put an argument here but because we have already given a default argument so it will give you a hello guest but if you want to override the guest then what you can do then you can give the name of of the person okay and now when you'll call it you will get hello cl coding okay now this was default argument okay then there is the keyword arguments means the arbitrary arguments and the arbitrary keyword arguments now what are these so first of all the arbitrary arguments and the keyword arbitrary arguments allow functions to accept an arbitrary number of positional and keyword arguments respectively okay what does it mean it means that when you don't know that how many parameters are going to be required in your function then you can use this arbitrary arguments or when you don't know that how many keyword arguments is going to be used in your uh, function then you can use a keyword argument okay so they are very useful when you don't know in advance that how many arguments will be passed that i already explained to you okay now let's see an example of this so let's create for the simple arguments means the for the arbitrary arguments so we have to use the asterisk and then the argument name okay now it is not compulsory that you will take ARGS only, you can anything. Now what I'll do, I'll take a loop, okay, and in this, using this loop, I'm going to print all the numbers which we are going to take as an input, okay. And inside the loop, I'm going to print the ARG, okay. Now I'll just call my print ARGS, okay. Now you'll see. I'll give multiple values, okay? I'm just giving randomly one, two, three, four, five. Now let's execute the code. So now you can see because we have used the loop and the number was not fixed that how many number we are going to take as a parameter. So that's why we use the asterisk and the arbitrary argument, okay? And remember that there will be no gap between the asterisk and the name. And then you can take as many as argument you want and it will get executed, okay? Now, the same thing we'll do now we'll do it for the keyword arguments so let's see how we can give the keyword arguments so for that what we can do let's give okay now for the keyword arguments we have to give double asterisk okay same process only instead of single we have to give double asterisk and now because it is a keyword arbitrary argument means we are going to give the key and the values together so for the iteration we are going to use two values key and value in our kwrgs okay and then as we know in the dictionary how we use you use the items so we are going to use the items method and then we are going to print using the s string we will print first we will print the key and then we are going to print the value okay and now let's call the function okay so for calling the function we'll write the name of the function and in this function now see how we are defining our arguments we'll define our arguments with a key 
and then with their values. So let's say our name is CL coding. Okay. And then we'll mention our age. So let's support our age to be 30. Okay. Now let's execute it. So now you will see this, uh, this five is still this fun previous function. And now for this function, we are getting name age. So for suppose if I have to add phone number also, let's suppose. So if you're adding a phone number also means it is not fixed at how many keyword, uh, key and key values we are going to take. So you can mention as many as values and they will all get executed here. means they all get printed here. So this was the arbitrary arguments and the keyword arbitrary arguments. Okay. Now let's move to the next topic. That is the Lambda function. Okay. That what is Lambda function first? So a Lambda function is a small and anonymous function defined using the keyword Lambda. Okay. It is a small and anonymous function. What do you mean by anonymous? Anonymous means a function which has no name. Okay. Now why it is very useful? So it is useful for short functions that are used once or passed as arguments to higher order function. Okay. So this is used as a sort functions when you need a function only for once use means only for using once. And you can, and these lambda function can be passed in our higher order function means in the map function or the reduce or in filter. So let's see an example of this also. So we'll see first a simple example. Okay. Uh, let's say for doubling for doubling a number means multiplying a number with two so for that we are going to create a lambda function so first of all we have to use a lambda keyword then a parameter so this lambda defines that it is a function then we take a with a space we take parameter we, you can take as many as parameters you want okay then after colon you're going to define your expression that what you want to perform so suppose x is my parameter and I want to double the x. So x multiplied with 2. Now what we have to do, we are just simply going to okay, double and we'll provide a number. Let's say suppose 5. So it will double it because this x, this 5 will get stored in the x and it will get multiplied with 2. So we'll get our 10 here. Okay. Now let's see one more example with the help of the higher order function map. So for that, let's take a list of numbers. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. These are the list of uh, items. Then what we have to do, we will just convert these all items. I mean, we are going to return a square of all these numbers. Okay. So let's first of all, create a squared variable. And then let's take the list. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you the use of the list. Okay. Let's first create it. Then lambda is there, then x. Then what we are going to do? Our expression time. Okay. So as we know, inside the map function, the first parameter the map takes it takes the function, and the second it takes the uh, the iterable name. So iterable name is items, and the function which we have created for square. Now let's just do what? Let's print squared. Okay. So now you can see one, two, three, four, five have been squared to 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25, okay? Now, why we have used this list function? We have used this list function because map returns the object address, okay? To convert that object address, we have to use the list, okay? To map it and convert it into a list because we want as output, we want our output as to be a list. So because of that, we have kept the map function inside a list function, okay? A list constructor. Now, next move to the next topic that is doc strings, okay? What are doc strings? So these are the strings that describes what a function does. Okay. Placed at the first line within the function body. Okay. It means that first of all, doc strings, you can also call it as documentation for a function. Okay. So it is not, it is just simply a, a string only that describes about the function that what the function does. Okay. And it is always placed at the first line within the function body starts means after the body is starting of the function the first line will be the doc string okay now what is the help of it means why to use it so it helps in documenting your code okay which i have already told you means for suppose if someone is watching your code or looking to your code so just by the doc string of that function he or c or any programmer will easily identify that what is the purpose of this function okay so now let's do what let's uh, take an example of this also uh, so let's create a function for adding okay which will take two parameters a and b so now i have to mention so for mentioning i'll use 
okay i'll mention the triple double quotes okay and i'll just give here that returns the sum of two numbers okay so this is my doc string and now i'll do what return a plus b now i'll perform my operation that what I, I want to do okay now so let's do what let's call add with two numbers five and three okay and now let's just see so it will do it work okay eight and if you want to print this doc string okay when you if you want to print this doc string so then what you can do then again you can take a print and in this print you will take the function name add and then you will specify double underscore doc double underscore okay so now you can see returns the sum of two numbers means you can print this doc string also using this expression means this attribute add with the function name add dot which is in the dot operator underscore doc double underscore double underscore underscore doc and double underscore so this was doc string how you can access the doc string okay now let's just see returning multiple values the next thing is that we can return multiple values now how we can do that now first of all what is returning multiple value so python allows functions to return multiple value as a tuple so in the form of tuple we can return multiple values Huh? this thing is allowed by the python functions then why to use this it enables us to return complex data without creating a class or data structure means without creating any separate class or any data structure we can just easily return our uh, values so let's see an example of this also so we'll just create a, a simple function for get name and age okay so i'll just make the name only get a name and then i'll just put name so let me give cl coding here okay then there is age so in the age let's post 30 and then i'm going to return both i'll return the name also and then return the age also now it's time for just printing name and age separately so what we can do we can take two variables separately and then we can call the function get name and age here so now for name that will be get stored in name and age will get stored in age so when we'll print the name and the age so we'll get the cl coding and the 30 so this is okay this is also called as unpacking okay now let's move to the next uh next step or next topic that is function annotations okay now what is this function annotations okay so first of all let's see what is function annotation so it provides a way to attach metadata to function arguments and return values okay now why to use this function annotation it helps in providing hints about the expected data types which improves code readability okay so what do you mean by that so let's see the example first then i think you guys will get understand that what i mean about this so let's create a function for adding okay then i'll take two parameters a comma b but now i'll do what I'll take a colon in A and I'll mention the data type. Okay. Int. So this means what? This means that this A and B is expected to be in integer format. Okay. Okay. Now let's just do what? Now again, I'll take an arrow. Okay. And in this arrow, I'll again mention int. Now what does this mean? This integer means that we are supposing that A and B will be an integer value okay now what do you mean by this a arrow and then the int this means that the expected return means the output also that is to be expected in integer only okay so now we'll do what we'll we are just going to return a plus b okay and let's just do what let's use the print add and let's give two numbers two and seven so it will do the same work but here we have explicitly mentioned that a and b expects in teaser and output also expects in teaser only so this is function annotations okay which has access the means which is attached to the metadata also okay in a function argument means on the defining the function parameters now the last thing that we'll see for today in this for this video is the closures okay now what are these closures these are functions that capture the local state of the environment in which they were created okay why they are use means why to use them they are useful for creating function factories or decorators so i think you have heard of decorators so let's see an example so what i am going to do i am going to take 
uh, outer function x means outer function okay which will take x then inside the function i'm going to take a nested function inner which is going to take y okay now in this inner i'm going to return x plus y and this outer is going to return the inner okay then what i'll do i'll first call the outer with 5 in add 5 and then i'm going to print add underscore 5 okay with 10 now i'll not execute it i'll just first explain it and then i'll execute it okay so first there is this outer x okay this is the function which is going to take an input x okay that is visible that we can see also then inside it uh the inside outer function there is the inner function okay that takes input y then this inner function is returning it is just taking x and y and then returning the result but one more thing to notice here that that it is adding x from the outer from the outer function and y from the inner okay and then returning the result this things to be should be clear then now this outer function which i have already told you that this inner is being returned from this outer function okay this means that if you are going to call means when we are going to call the outer x means outer function then we are going to get back the inner function that remembers the value of x means when you will call this outer function means when we are calling this outer function with 5 so this outer function is going to call the inner okay and this inner is going to remember the x only okay yeah so now this x has 5 okay now when we are calling the outer in this add 5 so this is going to call outer with 5 which creates the inner function where x is 5 okay means this add 5 is going to create the inner function that has 5 in it so now the add 5 means now the add 5 is the function that adds 5 to any number you give to it means if you are going to give any number to this add 5 so this add 5 is going to add that number with this 5 okay so when we have given here 10 so this 10 is going to be add with this 5 so this 10 will be the y and this 5 will be the x so when we are going to return it we are going to get 15 here okay so this was close yours that how we are, how we can work with the nested function okay now i hope this video finds very useful for you guys so thanks for watching the video we'll see you in the next